Hi folks, thought I'd show a quick video about the Ranko temperature controller that Heatmaster uses on all their C model furnaces. The MF series from years ago, the WF models, Eco 3000, goes way back to about 2004. I think they first started using this controller. It's a very simple, reliable controller that's available from many different supply houses and on the internet and stuff. Um, so basically all the furnaces are, uh, the, that use this controller are going to have an on-off switch, well, probably a light switch if it has a light. Someone did, some didn't. And then the controller is mounted here on this flat panel. The panel is held in there with these four screws. Um, on the back side, what you're seeing is just the front face of it there. It's a lot bigger than that. Uh, here on the back side, um, it's behind this insulation. I'm going to show you the actual controller inside here in the shop. Uh, where you can actually see how it's what it actually is but there what i want to show you back here is the, where the temperature probe goes into the tank it's a brass fitting and the the probe is inserted into a hollow space there in the place there in the fitting held in with black silicone so if you ever replace this controller you just pull on the on the probe and it'll pop out of the silicone it's not actually you don't have to thread the fitting out of the tank you don't need to drain the tank um so let me go inside here and um in the shop and you can actually see what's behind here so this is a the same controller just mounted on a piece of osb here um, you can see the temperature probe there i was talking about that was inserted into that fitting that just pokes in there and that's where it's actually measuring the temperature if i would hold this with my fingers uh, eventually you'd see the temperature start to rise as, as the warmth from my hand um, goes through the probe there but it'd probably take a bit um, there it goes up a bit um, so this is the you can see the temperature rising. So this is the actual controller. If you press any of these buttons, it backlights. So if you're just going out to check your water temperature, I would bump the uh, one of those and your see your temperature climb. Um, the way the, to do the to set the settings, if you want to change them, you press set one time. There's a Fahrenheit Celsius option. I'm toggling between there with the up or down arrow. So I'll leave that on F. Second set. That's the temperature of the stove runs up to and shuts off. Typically, we would run that at either 170 to 180, somewhere in that range. Typically, really cold weather, we'll run it hotter. Summertime, we'd back off and run at 170. Just because if the stove comes up to temp and shuts off, if there's any air leakage around the door gaskets or anything, it's going to creep a little bit over up to 175 or 180. You don't want it to go on up to 190 if you shut off too high. 180 is about the hottest you want to run on an open system like these stoves are. Um... So that's your second set is your set point. I'm um, sorry, it toggles back every 30 seconds to the water temperature. So it's Fahrenheit, your cutoff temperature. I would not run that lower than 160. It'll start getting some condensation in the stove. It'll sweat. And set again, it says 10, and you can adjust that up or down with the arrows. Uh, I usually run that on 10 in the wintertime. Summertime, if you're just running it for hot water, sometimes you have to back it off to like 2 or 3 degrees to make it run a short cycle to help keep the fire lit. But it's not as efficient running that way. Um, set again. There's an H1 and C1 option on this controller. H1 would be if it's run as a heating system. So that's what we're doing with the outdoor furnaces. In C1 would be like if you were using this control to operate like a walk-in freezer or some other application that doesn't apply. And the temperature, that 10 degree differential, instead of dropping and heating back up, it waits for the temperature to rise and cool down. So just make sure you leave that on H1 so it cycles properly. And then the newer Ranko controllers in the last few years have an option on here for a compressor delay. Delay, and it's just set at zero, just leave that at zero. It doesn't apply to what we're doing. And then set again, you're back to water temperature. So it's Fahrenheit Celsius, your shutoff temp, differential, how many degrees it drops till the fan kicks on, H1 for heat, compressor delay at zero, you're back to water temperature. So that's that. So what you're seeing there uh, behind that metal cover plate is just this much of it. This whole other panel, I mean, this little box is behind there. I've got it wired up here to an extension cord and powered over here to a fan. Um, so inside, what you'll see is the temperature, sorry, the temperature probe coming out the top. Obviously there's the brains, the circuit board. The power to the controller here are these two white wires that I just have this little white cord hooked up. Uh, 120 volts in and neutral there on the other side and you can also run this on 220 if, if that was what you were doing in this case we're not 
And then the power to the fan goes through the switch or the relay here at the bottom. It doesn't normally open. It goes in the C. It's hard to see there. And there you can see C. And then there's an NC. Or excuse me, NO. NC and NO. Normally open means it's open until the switch closes based on the water temperature. So if you were replacing this controller, there would actually be a jumper from the 120 volt circuit down here to the common, goes through the switch, and then out to normally open to the fan. Um, is how that would be wired. But it, basically, if you're replacing this, you just take out one wire at a time and just replace it exactly like you found it. Um, but it's pretty pretty simple wiring inside. Um, it's just a switch that closes based on the water temperature. So we're here at, yeah, 76 degrees. And um, obviously, if you run the stove, it would be a lot hotter. But that's a quick run-through on the settings and what this controller is. Hope that's useful to you. Thanks.